Okay, so Trina can moon you, just so you know, and she can do it from behind, but she can keep her keep her, keep her her shorts on, so that's pretty good, actually. Coming up is Trina's full moon rising and Matt, the amazing tattoo artist. Kuna here for Tat Stories. I've got Trina, and I found her on Clearwater. I actually found her on Instagram, and I met her here in Clearwater to shoot an episode of Tat Stories. She's got some awesome ink. We're going to get some B-roll of it here so you can see it, and we'll pop it up on screen. Trina, tell me a little bit about the pieces you've got. You've got some beautiful women on this particular arm and a half sleeve. What is it, what's it all about? So the girls are going to be traditional from my favorite cartoon when I was little called Sailor Moon because <clears throat> I didn't want to do a bunch of anime and color after it already started, all the black and white on this side. Okay, so this is going to be Sailor Moon. Now, now I notice that right now it's black and gray work. Is there going to be any color at some point? No, I won't add color. I don't like how it fades. I like that. So she's paying attention to ink long term, which is actually a pretty good idea. Because you know what, folks? It can fade. It can do other things. you got to touch it up. She's going black and gray, and it looks spectacular. Now, you've got a full sleeve here. Tell me what that's all about. So I started with just this little shoulder mandala, and I I really loved it so much. Like they say, getting tattoos is addicting, so I dragged it down to just like a half sleeve. And then I was like, you know what, let's just go all the way. So I let my artist freehand most of this, and we filled it all in. You can see where we've got like little tiny half mandalas where he just filled it in. And I really love it. I like how it turned out. And then after that, I just themed everything around my sleeve. She went all the way, folks. I'm telling you, all the way down to the wrist, it looks spectacular. Now, what are you going to get next? I've got to finish this sleeve because the Sailor Moon characters actually have five inner scouts, and I want to get at least all five inner scouts on this arm, but I'm going to do them all traditional. So, like, I have, this is supposed to be Sailor Mars. She has ravens as pets in the anime, so I made sure to include her raven and her symbol. And then I still have to do the other three inner scouts. And then after that, I'll probably finish my legs. Awesome. That, that, that's going to be awesome. Now, the legs are starting here, folks. And we'll get a picture of those. What are you going to do on the legs? I want to wrap this entire shin and calf in a sleeve. And then it'll probably still be all themed in the mandala theme. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do after that. If I'm going to go the whole leg after I get the calf wrap or what? So it's going to be a calf wrap, so is a leg a legging or is it a sleeve? I've always heard it just called a leg sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let us know in the comments what you think it should be called. Now, how about your back? You ever going to do something on your back? I have my back partially done already. I have a big moon phase mandala in it that starts with, I think it starts with the new moon and ends with the full moon. So it's new moon, fades into full moon, fades back into the new moon. Okay, so where I come from, we know there's waxing and waning moons. I think she's got all the moons, right? I do. I have all the moons. <laughs> I have waxing and waning. <laughs> okay, so Trina can moon you, just so you know, and she can do it from behind, but she can keep her, keep her, keep her shorts on, so that's pretty good, actually. Um, so let me ask you this. Tell me a little bit about your artist. One artist do it all? Yes, I have Benjamin Paley do all my stuff. He owns Sacred Skin in Endicott, New York. I started following him on Instagram. Some of my friends had worked by him. I watched his work for six years before I finally let him do my first piece. And I liked his line work so much, and he, it was so clean that I just, I just went back. I did, like, this whole sleeve in a year. I just got it all done at once. Two key points here, folks. The first is... She looked at and saw how an artist evolved to make sure she really wanted him to put ink on her body. Yeah. And the second thing is she found him online via Instagram. You know, I'm all for local shops, but you know what? Sometimes you find just the right artist if you go out on social media and they may not be in your town. So Trina did a, gr gr did a great job of finding exactly the person she wanted. Now, is he going to do the rest of your work as well? Yes, I won't switch. We've already discussed after this baby comes, getting the rest of my sleeve done and finishing my back and my thighs because I I don't want to mix different artist styles when I already have so much of his style on me. I understand that. Post baby art, folks. So we're going to have pre and post baby. That's going to be pretty cool. Congratulations, by Thank the way. You. 
All right, well, this is Kahuna. We are in Clearwater, Florida. This is Trina. We're gonna make sure that we pop up her Instagram so you can follow her journey and you can check out her ink as it grows. Uh, and also, you know, maybe you wanna, maybe you wanna follow her in general. Trina, we wanna thank you so much. And this is Kahuna. We are Tat Stories and we are out. Kahuna for Tat Stories here. I'm with Matt Wheatling, and we are at the Nevermore Tattoo Studio in Port St. Lucie, Florida. It is an awesome location, folks. Matt's not only a tattoo artist, but he's a tattoo collector, too. So we're going to talk to him a little bit about his art. We're going to talk to him a little bit about the art that he's got on himself. And we're going to get a little bit of a lowdown on the shop here, just see what's going on. So we'll kind of start in that order. Matt... Tell me a little bit about your favorite tattoo. Uh, my favorite tattoo is uh, I have a, uh, a pinup girl. She's uh, kind of barbarian style on my ribs, and she's got a, like an enormous cobra coming up over her, and she's, she's holding the cobra kind of like, uh, like that's her controller or whatever, and it's definitely probably my favorite piece that I have, and it's, geez, it's probably 15 years old now, and it still looks phenomenal with all the little details and so forth. Okay, so he's got a barbarian on his rib cage. We kind of like that. We're going to get B-roll of that and show it to you because, you know what? There's always room for a barbarian princess in somebody's life. you got to have one, right, yes. folks? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Um, you've got a really nice piece uh, here on your arm, and, you know, some of us got a little bit of a personal, um, you know, personal connection to you. Tell the people about that one. You know, this stuff, for the most part, it it began with, you know, scratching from home, you know, on my friends and things like that. Just trying to get into the industry, learning how to tattoo. As a carpenter at that point, nobody wanted to teach me how to tattoo because my hands were swollen and beaten and cut from work. Uh, so I just kind of started to learn on my own. And we did a few things. And then as I got an apprenticeship, my boss sat me down at one point in time and he just started to work my arm for my birthday. And we sat for like five hours. At that point... He put his machine down to wipe my arm up, and I just got up and left because I didn't want to get tattooed anymore. <laughs> so I went home and came back the next day and went to work and, and just appreciated every part of it. There is one, point, uh, one part of my upper arm that, uh, that a friend of mine did. He was my best friend at, the, at this point in time. Uh, he's no longer with us, and I will never, ever touch the tattoo. As bad as it is, I'll never change it, nothing. I'll keep it just the way it is just because of the memory and the individual. Uh, now keep in mind... Cover-up's good, but sometimes you keep stuff just because it has sentimental value. And you know what? That is absolutely awesome because you can point to it and say, hey, let me tell you a story behind that one, huh? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely stories behind every tattoo. Even if it's not about the tattoo, it's where you were and what you were doing at that point in time. Or you know, just a, a five-minute click of something that might have happened. That makes absolute sense to me. Now, you've been tattooing for a while. How many years? Uh, I started professionally in 2004, working out of the house, uh, a, a few years before that. Uh, so let's just say 18 years on a, on a professional level. And tell me, what kind of style do you like, or is there any particular type of ink you like putting on folks? I like Asian style. Uh, I think it's just cool. There's a lot of different directions you can go with it, maybe updating it a little bit. Uh, I really like to do everything as long as I get to put my twist on it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, what is my twist? Just to make it as cool as I can. Uh, you know, if you can look at my Instagram page or anything like that, you can see quite a different twist on things. Nothing too crazy. Some things outside the box, some things inside the box, just different. Well, let me ask you this. When somebody asks you for uh, a tattoo, what do you need from them? I mean, what? you need a description. What are you looking for? Even if I got just one word, that'd be fine. I have clients that tell me, just do what you want to do, which could be great for me. It, it could be not great for me. You know what I'm saying? People come in and they say, hey, do what you want to do, and then I'll draw something on their arm or whatever the case may be, and they'll go, oh, I really didn't have that in mind. I'm like, well, why don't you just tell me what you wanted in the first place? You know, so give me a word. I want an angel, or I want a devil, or I want a skull with flames, or a, a giant koi fish, or a snake, anything like that. Just one word, and that'll, that'll get me started. When you think about, you know, 
getting a tattoo and actually giving one, um, what's what's an important consideration when you think about you know how you want to stage it? I mean, is, is there any things people got to be aware of, especially when they're you know when they're coming in, you know, timing that kind of stuff? Uh, I, just be ready. I mean, uh, having that idea is really the big deal. Uh, when you obviously when you have your consult, you want to kind of lay out for them like, hey, this is what it might take. It might take four sessions. It might take five sessions. It might be one session all day. Who really knows? What can you get done in one day? A lot. What can you get done in one day? A little. It just depends on what it is and how you're going to approach it. You know, every style is a, a little bit different time frame on on how it's uh, how it's brought to life. We'll say. Uh, so yeah, we just, uh, as long as you get the basics down and, and everybody knows how it's going to go, then we just take it from there. Yeah, I could see that. I could actually see that being important. So think about that folks, when it comes to staging, make sure you understand how it's going to happen, how many days, how long, and that'll be directly determined by the amount of, uh, you know, fine work, uh, color, uh, you name it, you know, all the contributors that, that, that cost time. Uh, you know, and ultimately contribute to an incredible piece. But you got to make sure that you take all that in consideration. Your artist will know, but guess what? You got to listen to your artist because if they say, look, you got to wait a week in between this piece, you better wait a week in between the piece because they understand how it's going to heal and what they're going to do next. Yeah, you know, even, even like, say, particular people's line of work could be a factor in how their tattoo heals. Like mechanics are some of the toughest people to tattoo and they want their arms tattooed, but they're destroying their arms when they reach up inside a motor or something like that and they're burning themselves and things like that and it, things can be rough. So you kind of want to alter your tattoo style to what's going to be beneficial to them with, say, their career because they're, you know, you don't want to put a big, you know, cool color piece and then have it burn it off on somebody's exhaust, which has happened multiple times, you know, things like that. It's just a line of work is a factor too. So, so pick your design wisely, we'll say, or listen to your artist. Yeah, I, get, I definitely get that. So when you're looking at, um, you know, doing a piece of work on somebody and, uh, you know, where does your inspiration come from? Just from a, you know, is it just out of your mind's eye or do you, do you, you look to past pieces? You look at some of the stuff other people have done and you're going to morph it into your own style. What do you do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, reference is definitely a key thing. Everybody does, you know, things on such a different level. It's it's actually pretty helpful. If every artist tattooed the same, what would be the point? We spoke about that earlier. But yeah, I definitely pull reference. Uh, I have a lot of, you know, old school type influences. A lot of the newer artists I don't really know a lot about. You know, you see them come across the TV for Ink Masters and things like that. But it's the older ones that, that really stick out to me because those are the ones that I came up with. Like Philip Lou, I didn't bring him up earlier. That He's an amazing artist, actually. He's still going now, still tattooing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's a good one. A lot of the, the Miami Ink guys, those are the guys that I came up watching and so forth. So, you know, from seeing their pages and things like that, there's a lot of other artists that will come to light just because they know each other through the grapevine or whatever and and that's kind of how i see things but but you know having their reference is a big help to me now i just throw my twist on it i get that uh -huh. If there's any place you could go on earth to go check out a tattoo artist what country would it be uh you know I'm not real familiar with a lot of areas i, I know my wife she wants to go to italy so i would say we would probably got to try to go to italy or something and just to kind of appease her with that and if we could find somebody local that was on that amazing level, even if we had to seek somebody out, I, I would definitely go that route. You know? So, uh, yeah, yeah, Italy. Yeah. All right, Italy, be careful because Matt's coming. <laughs> Just be careful. And, you know, we'll make some recommendations to Matt because, you know, we spent some time in Italy, so it'll be good. There we go. um, yeah, there's some great artists in Milan. You're going to like that town. Well, let me ask you this. When you're, um, you know, when you're uh, looking at artists today, uh, or more importantly, better yet, when you're looking at equipment today, how's that helpful? I mean, is it evolving? Is it is it doing stuff for your art that makes it easier for you? Or yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the newer equipment has definitely done wonders for my hand in general. You know, with with the heavy coil machines from previous. Uh, you know, they wear on you. The not not only like carpal tunnel factors, things like that, but just the weight of the machine is has actually like worn like sores on my hand just from rubbing back and forth. I actually used to have this giant wart type callus thing on this finger just from you know my uh, the tube from my coil machine like leaning against that, and it's 
The new rotaries and battery powered equipment is beyond amazing and it is a savior for any old school type tattoo artist. Most of the newer artists, they come up on that sort of thing. So they'll never really understand what it was like to run a coil machine for, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day. Uh, I'm definitely done with those days. You know, it's 12 to 8. <laughs> so he's, he's not going back old school, folks. He's, he's going to stick with technology. That's a good thing. Yeah, I have probably 40 or 50 coil machines, and I, I'll never sell them. They're memories. And it's just, I would actually sit down and love to do a coil machine tattoo every now and again just to kind of have the memory back about it. I say that now, but then if I pick up the coil machine, I'll be like, man, what's wrong with this thing? My battery power runs so much better. So <laughs> definitely having new technology is good, but not everything is good. Sometimes older is better. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I, you know, this is an amazing shop. Uh, you got to come down here, Nevermore Tattoo Studio. Now, Mike's been kind enough to tell me two hours Orlando, two hours Miami. It's kind of in the middle. So, you know, come on down and see Mickey. Make sure you check out Mike, get some ink. You know, maybe Mickey ink, who knows? I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe Mickey ink is a skull. Mickey ink, we could definitely do a Mickey skull for you. Actually, you know what I'm like? I have, I've already done it. I've already done it. And, and the mechanic I was talking about, he's the one that has it. He's got a Mickey skull on him. Mickey skull, there you go. Well, you know what? I'd like to see what a Dumbo skull looks like. <laughs> I work on that. I have to work on that. You know, you know, we do do kind of like the art challenges sometimes. You know, so we'll, sometimes we'll do like a mashup. They might call it. Give me a raccoon with an ice cream cone and a piece of pizza or whatever. You know, like okay. Raccoon and, ice cream cone. There you go. Okay, now there's a mashup with, with a hammer. You know, like okay, now what? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike. I want to thank you so much for hosting us today. Again, Nevermore Tattoo Studio. Port St. Lucie, Florida. You will see Mike's information in the Instagram. Matt. Hmm? Matt. Or Matt. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, but my you know, gosh. You know, that's funny, though. The well, last well. The shop that I apprenticed at, everybody was Mike. Everybody was Mike, even though we all had different names. Everybody well, ju Mike. just so you know, folks, I met Matt through a Mike. Yeah, through a Mike. So that's why I was thinking Mike. Yes, I, I my apologies for that, Matt. But you get you get down here to Nevermore Tattoo Studio, check it out. They got some great, great stuff. Matt Matt here is looking to do you know he's looking to do more ink. He's got time, you know. You can find him in a phone book. You can find him on Insta. Make sure you reach out. He's actually participating as one of the Great American Tattoo Artists in our Great American Tattoo Giveaway. So we look forward to seeing what he actually puts on somebody when they win. So. Matt? Yeah, I'm waiting for that. Actually, I'm definitely waiting for it. Man, it's I want. Booking. You have to book appointments, though. I want to thank you, and yeah, you definitely got to book uh, when that happens. But I think the important thing is, we are thrilled to death to be here. And again, my apologies on the name thing. I was thinking about the guy that introduced us. Yeah, so. no, Mike. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He's a great guy. Like he's sometimes like to send me things out of the blue. So, Mike from Twisted Angels, this is a shout out to you too. Mike. The, this yeah. is Kahuna. This is Matt. We are out of here.